Hello, hi, this is Pastor Smith, First Gospel Church, Little Rock, Arkansas. Especially want to minish, mention to all the saints of First Gospel Church. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry that we're not able to have services together right now with this COVID-19 uh, of, of uh, coronavirus being a part of us or what we're going through with it. Uh, but I, I, uh, I feel that we are certainly doing the right thing. The Bible does tell us to be uh, uh, you know, in compliance with the government as much as what's possible. And I think what the government is trying to do is, is uh, certainly the right thing to do. Um, I think the least that we have contact with each other, the, the safer we are with this virus. Anyway, we'll, we've never been through anything like this before in our lifetime, and, and uh, this is something that's new for not only America, but the whole world. And, uh, but I'm thankful that we have the media, the internet, and uh, that uh, we're able to utilize uh, technology like we have today to stay together. And so I want to greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and tell you that, number one, <clears throat> I don't think the Lord would want you to panic or to fear. Uh, I, uh, I feel that uh, it's not pleasing to God for his children to fear. I'll, I'll give you a couple scriptures. Um, there's a um, scripture in in Second Peter uh, two thirteen. It says, "Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers, for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that." with well-doing you may put to silence ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty uh, for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, uh, in the, uh, the book of John, in the, let me read you a scripture in the fourth chapter of, of the book of John. Um, uh, let me see here. Let's start in uh, the 17th verse. It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may know boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. For he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Uh, and it's true that uh, it's not pleasing for to God for his children to fear um, because... Um, it says perfect love cast out fear. If you understood, really truly understood God's perfect love for you, and then, you know, eventually we're to develop in God's love <clears throat> towards him and towards others. But when you understand God's overall plan and his purpose and the fact that you're his child and that he watches over you, the Bible says a, a sparrow doesn't fall to the ground, but what he's aware of it. How much more are you than, than, than sparrows or any, any live thing? We are the height of God's creation and the purpose of his creation is to, to have someday an eternal family that is righteous, that won't corrupt anything, that can live 
without any judgment throughout eternity. And so if you understand God's love, you won't fear because you, you will trust in God and you will know that God watches over you and that God, the Bible says, the steps of a good man, that includes women too, mankind, are ordered of the Lord. And that's his children, his righteous people. God watches over you. He orders your steps. Uh, that doesn't mean every step that you take or, you know, what uh, uh, every little single thing that you do. In fact, the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes does tell us that chance happens to all of them, regard, re, referring to men. So God doesn't, he doesn't interfere with everything, but he's certainly aware and he will interfere with anything that interferes with his overall plan concerning his purpose, concerning his children, even individually. And so you shouldn't fear. Uh, it, it's not pleasing to God for you to live in fear or be tormented by it. There are those that are absolutely uh, given and tormented by fear. And 98% of everything that people fear never happens anyway. And by the way, fearing what may happen doesn't change anything about what's going to happen. So it's, it's not worth being under the torment or under the imprisonment or being shut up in the fear of man or even your own mind, the things that's in your mind. You have to learn to cast that out of your mind and not allow yourself to be fearful. Now, I understand um, that there, the Bible talks about another fear. It talks about, you know, uh, the fear in the 111th Psalm, I believe it is. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. Uh, and that kind of fear is talking about our awe, our respect for God and even fear of his judgment. But <clears throat> if you're God's child and you're trusting in him and you're trying to live right and do according to God's righteous plan and what he's requiring of your life according to your knowledge right now, then uh, you do fear God and that's wisdom. And that's a different kind of fear than John was talking about when he's talking about the fear of the flesh, the fear, the fear of corruption. Um, let me see if I can find that scripture that's coming to my mind. It's in the book of Romans uh, maybe, let me check here, maybe the, the, the 12th uh, chapter. Mm. Give me just a second here. By the way, this is the first time I've ever done this live broadcasting, so this is, it's a new experience for me. And, um, but it may be something we may need to use uh, in the future more than we ever have before. I am working on uh, using our media to put out a live Bible study worldwide, primarily to the Dominican Republic. Uh, and I, I can even talk live and have a split window and have Brother Green interpret uh, for me, for those in the Dominican Republic. I can see where uh, we can get far more done than in the days of the early church where Paul had to either go by foot, by donkey, or, or by boat uh, on his missionary journey. Sometimes it may take him, you know, maybe a year to get to a certain area, a certain territory, or I can get on the internet and go to all them territories in a very short period of time. I used to ask Brother Leniger, uh, I'd say, Brother Leniger, you know, they had more time in the early church. It looks like we've only got seven and a half years um, or the last prophetical 15-year hour. 
uh, looks like the first part of it makes up the bride or, and the last part of it, the wrath of God's poured out. But uh, regardless if we even had the whole 15 years, that's a short period of time compared to what the early church had in overcoming sin and making the bride. <laughs> and uh, Brother Langer would tell me and say, well, we can't change the Bible. <laughs> you know, it shows that's all the time we've got. But he, he would reference that and say, look, you've got the internet. You can fly in a plane. You can drive in a car. They did all this uh, in, in a different way, uh, very primitively. And so he said, you'll get a lot more accomplished uh, in a very short period of time in the end of the Gentile world. So I've always, I've always accepted that answer. Um, I'm, I'm still looking for my scripture. Excuse me just a minute. I, um, just a minute, I believe I can get it. Yes, here it is. It's in the eighth uh, chapter of, of Romans in the 15th verse. It says... Uh, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. And so <clears throat> we... We're not to fear, but we are to trust God. And we're living in a time that right now you need to put your trust in God. One of the things that I can tell you, uh, I don't know, number one, I do not know what, you know, what this coronavirus or what our government's going to do or, or where, what we're looking at in the, in the near future and us trying to hold down on these crowds. Uh, you know, they first start, this started by saying uh, that we would do this for 14 days. I, I, I have a strong feeling that they will probably extend that length of time. Um, I've even considered, I've considered home services. I've, I've thought for some time about having home services uh, but uh, the thing that bothers me about that, that puts us in a very uh, close uh, uh, connection with each other and uh, in a home. And uh, even if you held it down to 10 people, uh, it'd be difficult with a church our size to have that many home services so for right now, I'm just praying. I'm waiting on the Lord to see what the Lord, uh, you know, how the Lord would lead us on this. And of course, I'm conferring with the elders of our church and elders of the body. I've been in close contact with them since this thing has started. By the way, I will announce to those of you who may have been planning on going to Brother Dial's meeting in April, he canceled that meeting. Right now, he's proposing to have it November the 3rd through the 6th, which uh, I think in Mount Carmel, we'd change the Wichita meeting to the 10th through the 13th or something like that. Uh, but he, Brother Green, has uh, relinquished and canceled that meeting in lieu of allowing Brother Dial to have his meeting, and he'll announce a later meeting. So there will not be a meeting. Right now there is no meetings that we'll be having on a general or ministerial level um, until after April at this point. There's another meeting slated for uh, in May for Portland, Oregon. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But uh, right now the, the Jacksonville, Florida meeting has been canceled. Um, okay, uh, let me say something regarding uh, where we're at. Uh, there's people, by the way, that is listening to this that are not part of uh, our church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. 
And so I want to address them too, and I want to I want to thank you for for getting online and, and being with us today. Uh, but I, I want to I want to state this because um, I uh, I want you to know that we are absolutely if you're concerned about God's time frame, where are we at in God's time frame? Uh, I want you to be assured that we are we are not uh, in the latter uh, uh, part of of the Gentile world or God's judgment for the Gentile world. There are many things that still has to be done. I do think that we uh, are in the end time in the. Uh, we're in the latter part of the of the Gentile world, but I'll reference some things that has got to take place according to Bible prophecy before God is going to judge this world. And so I can tell you that this is not the end of the world. Somebody told me yesterday, you know, they they uh, they met someone said, "My Lord, what has uh, what has." Um, uh, happened is that is that has the rapture took place and we're we we didn't make it <laughs> well number one if the rapture took place uh, when you went into stores and there's nobody there there'd be plenty of people there because there's plenty of people that's not going to make it uh, and someone sent me a text you know this deal with with uh, toilet paper I have no idea why anyone would be trying to stock up on toilet paper by hundreds of packages of rolls. Somebody sent me a text yesterday. This is just a little bit comical. It said, uh, the rapture has took place because the toilet paper aisle in Walmart is empty. And that's because the rolls, R-O-L-L-S, has been called up yonder. <laughs> so people are, all kinds of things are going on right now. But I can assure you, that there is plenty to do. However, uh, I'd also like to state that it is uh, anything this big worldwide, uh, I, you can be assured that God is aware of it. He may have caused it. God could have brought this about. It could, been, it could come by, by chance or nature and God's just watching it and will use it to his benefit, someone told me yesterday, he said, uh, uh, this may cost more people to get in church uh, when it's over, if they can't go to church right now. I said, well, if it gets over very fast, the people aren't, they're, they're gonna feel like, you know, we needed, we, we were fearful, but now it's over, so we're not as afraid. It will take a calamity. God will, uh, God does though, and this you, you can already see just one little flip of the switch can change everything. And God knows exactly what switch to flip if he wants to change everything. Don't think for a moment that God's not capable of putting this, this United States of America on its knees. Let me, let me state why I just said the United States of America. And of course, we would include the world with it. But um, God chose America. He chose America in the end or latter parts of the Gentile world to restore his church. There's never been a country ever that's had the grace of God in the Gentile world of, uh, I received God's blessings and God's purpose working in it. This nation was called of God to restore his church and to finish his work in making up the bride, the remainder of the bride, in the end of the Gentile world. And of course, he's using America to reach out to all these other countries and no doubt getting the world ready for the thousand year millennial reign. But this nation has received much more from God. It's not because this nation is, is 
uh, wiser, that our forefathers were wiser men or greater men or uh, that we're better than other people? Not at all. It's because God chose this nation to restore his church and to plant the gospel of Jesus Christ, that gospel that the early church had, and God wants to use this nation and has used this nation to take this gospel throughout the remainder of the Gentile world. And so because our blessings have been greater and God's dealt with us in a greater way, his judgment will be greater on this nation also. And so God will judge America. There's no question in my mind about that as he will judge the whole world before it's over with. But right now, right now, I want you to understand this, that God has imputed righteousness to his people. While he's working on us to really truly be righteous, Ephesians 4 chapter says that we are to grow up into him uh, to the fullness of the stature of the man Christ Jesus, that we be tossed, be not tossed to and fro uh, by every wind of doctrine. And so God's, God is, he's working on us, developing his righteous. You and I are to become fully righteous, but in areas we may not be righteous yet, he's imputed righteousness because of the work of Christ. And so uh, God's working on us and he's finishing the work. Now, I will state this uh, in, in God's timetable, uh, there's several things that's going to take place. Number one, uh, in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations, there, there's a two-horned beast that is going to uh, build or create the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will set, be set up, or the, I'm sorry, the image of the beast. There's an image of the beast system that is to be set up yet in the end of the Gentile world. That hasn't happened yet. And um, the Bible talks about us taking the mark of his of the beast and his image. That hasn't took place yet. So uh, we're, we're, we have several things that's gotta take place yet. Uh, there's the Bible talks about the 10 horns, which are 10 kings or 10 king powers that's going to take the rule of the world, but that's going to be after the image of the beast takes rule of the world, which we have never yet been under a dragon power uh, in, in our lifetimes. There's been a dragon power in, in, in the Gentile world, but never in in the times of America, we, we haven't uh, been under a dragon power. Uh, in 1798, that ended with the French general uh, putting the Pope in, the, in prison and ended his rule worldwide, but the, the image is gonna be set up. Yet yeah, that has to take place. There has to be a dragon power that's going to be set up. And then after that takes place, eventually, and it'll be in a fairly short period of time, the 10 kings will take rule. All of that's got to take place. And then uh, there's still going to be the seven vials or the judgment of God that'll be poured out that'll end in the battle of Armageddon. Somebody asked me several years ago if when the two twin towers in New York was hit in 9-11, I got my phone started ringing. People started asking me, is this the end? Is, is this the beginning of Armageddon? I said, absolutely not. This is not the end of Armageddon. Just, we'll just have to watch and see what the, what's going to transpire here uh, after this uh, happens. But I can assure you, it's not the end. It's not any close to the end. There's too much that has to be done yet. Now, 
after me saying that, let me encourage you, or hopefully, um, possibly even cause you to fear a little bit, to realize our need for God is greater than it has ever been. We've been so blessed by God in the United States of America that people have grown cold because of their lack of need for God. Uh, you know, uh, we're not starving to death. We're people that are homeless, can find all kinds of help. And so, but we shouldn't let this time go by us and let us waltz us to sleep. But we should try to seek God right now. God is no doubt speaking. He wouldn't allow something like this worldwide to take place if he uh, didn't see that it would benefit his purpose. And it should benefit us by helping us to humble ourselves before God and let God uh, help us to get closer to him. And uh, I would, I want to get more perfected in the love of God to where I can trust in him more. I understand his love for me, his purpose for me. Uh, I can just tell you, if you're a child of God, look, Jesus, Jesus understood the perfect love of his father and his relationship with his father was of such that he trusted him fully, even unto death. He did not fear. I know in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, it, you know, there's no doubt he was entering into an unknown and he even asked God if there's any way this cup could pass from me, Lord. But, but not my will. He realized he was asking something that was totally out of God's will. He saw it couldn't pass from him and he said, not my will, Lord, but thine be done. Even in uh, each of our own individual cases of death, uh, we should be able to trust God and know, you know, the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, it didn't say the death of everybody. It said the death of his saints. And that's precious in God's eyes because if God hadn't finished his work in you, by the time you do die, there is a resurrection of the just. Even a resurrection of the unjust, all of his children, God's children will have an opportunity to see and hear and feel and know everything, the fullness of God that will lead them into righteousness and perfection, Bible perfection, total maturity. Uh, to be in the stature of the man Christ Jesus. That's what he's called us to be. And so I'll give you another earmark. Blindness in part, the Bible says, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come. Well, the fullness of the Gentiles haven't come and, and blindness is still on Israel. As far as their Messiah, Jesus Christ. But in the end of the Gentile world, God will touch Israel. After two days, Hosea said, which is 2,000 years prophetically, God will touch them and they will see Jesus is the Messiah and they will recognize that they missed him, they will accept him, and God will begin to bring the Israelites, them being a, tie, a tame olive branch. It says, and Paul said in Romans 11, if we being a wild olive branch and God can graft us into this, Gentiles, how much more them being a tame olive branch can God graft them back in? God will graft them back in because God will use a Jewish ministry down through the thousand years along with Jesus and his bride to finally bring righteousness throughout the entire world of those living during the thousand years. Isaiah said, 
if you was a child and you died at a hundred years old, it would be because you are cursed. So you die under judgment. But if you are down through the new earth, the millennium, the thousand year reign, and you're living for, for the Lord, you, you would be able to overcome sin down through that thousand years and never die. Put on eternal uh, salvation, eternal life. And uh, of course, there will be a, a, a resurrection after the thousand years. I believe that's the resurrection of the unjust. But uh, even those people are gonna have an opportunity uh, to finish their work. There's been people, I was talking to my wife, just sister that uh, my wife and I know, is a, a dear friend of my wife, and she got involved with a particular group of people that was a part of Brother Salders' ministry way back. And uh, she, she became a victim under things that happened in that particular church. She's no longer a part of us anymore, but she was hurt in a great way. And she's a victim. And God's not, he hadn't forgot her. That's God's Holy Ghost child. God loves her. And God will reach back into her life as, as soon as he gets an opportunity. As soon as he can, he will reach into her life. As he will in so many lives. Uh, you know, God's had to suffer with us because we've been foolish, unlearned, uh, without uh, some instruction, without knowledge, wisdom of God. We're still working for that. And uh, God's had to suffer with the mistakes that even his ministry, his people have made. God had not he's not forgetful. He hasn't forgot his children. He, re, he will reach back. If it takes a resurrection, God has not forgot them. That's the marvelous things about God. Precious in his eyes are the uh, death of his saints. Anyway, I, uh, I've been on here long enough. I appreciate everyone that's, that's been on here. And uh, I, uh, but to be honest with you, I, I really didn't, I just had a little bit of inclination of, of saying something about fear, but I didn't know where I was gonna go with the rest of uh, this broadcast. But I want you all to know I love you and I appreciate you. One of the things that I do wanna mention is, is that uh, the saints should remain faithful in their tithing and their offerings. Uh, you know, the church is just like all of our lives. It's still going on. It still costs just as much money to operate a church, even if we're not having service in the building right now. And so be faithful and continue to give. Uh, those in the First Gospel Church can call Sister Laura Durham, our secretary, and uh, you could give her, uh, she can give you information. Uh, we'll try to get set up this week with either a PayPal or our uh, credit card. One of the things I had Brother Painter post on our Full Gospel Church of Little Rock, fgclr.com. I had him post on there our, our address, which is now a P.O. box that you can mail your tithes and, and offering to. Uh, or uh, you all he also had him post our bank routing number and account number that if you have bill pay on your bank uh, online, then you could go to your bill pay and make uh, us a... Um, uh, someone that you're paying and you would have on our website, it's been posted now, our routing number and our account number, you can post it directly into our account off of your bill pay. So you can do that. We'll try to get things um, uh, sheared up and established a little bit better. Uh, by next week, we will have another online service, but anything else that we do that we haven't determined right now, we will, uh, we will let you know. We certainly will post it on our website. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. 
If you would, let's have a word of prayer together before we close today. Father, God, we know, we know you're in charge of our entire, not only our nation, but this world. And we know that Jesus, your son, is the head of the church. And we're asking you to help us and lead us through this time uh, of this virus, this contagious virus that's going through our country and claiming so many lives. I ask you to watch over our people, Lord. God, help us. Give us, give us caution. We know we can have faith without being reckless or careless and that we are to be cautious and wise and we're trying to follow your leading. This is something new to all of us. God, stay close to us. Watch over, protect your people. God, those that are sick in their bodies, those that are uh, uh, having situations that only you are able to help them with, Lord, we just pray and ask you and give you the petition, our request, Lord, that you would touch and help them. We ask you to lead and guide every one of us in your will. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. God bless you. I'll, uh, I'll be talking to you soon. I love every one of you. Uh, remain in his care. And just remember, Jesus loves you. Trust him. He'll take care of you. Have a good day.